Overboost 27. Overboost is a podcast interview series featuring discussions with speedrunners about their history in speedrunning and gaming and the runs they're passionate about. I am your host, PMC Trilogy, and with me today is Brian Nato. Brian Nato, how are you? I'm doing really well. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a little sleepy. It's still 10 a.m. over here on the West Coast, which is early for me. But I'm doing I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Awesome. I you know again, thank you so much for for joining me. I I like to start these off with current events, and uh, you've now th- in the time that I've been watching your stream a lot, you've done this several times, and most recently, I feel like you've gotten into Ghost Runner as your as your new thing uh, that you've been streaming and working on as a speed run uh first off how has the ghost runner experience been uh it's been good it's been really really good um it started all the way back in uh all the way back in may i would say when the when they dropped the first demo um i'd been <clears throat> i'd been watching this game for for quite a while i think they dropped a really cool looking trailer i think it was at e3 2019 um but yeah the the demo came out and uh we were just to put in perspective of how popular that first demo was is it was the number two or number three game on speedrun.com and it was only up for a week oh by by so, active runners right by active runners right. yeah so um yeah so it started back then um and uh that was just kind of like it was only the first level so that was just their little taste of it but it's definitely uh I, I would say, you know, after after that first demo came out, I definitely kind of like tempered my expectations a little bit, you know, because I didn't know what the full game was going to be like. But uh, yeah, it's been it's been good. Um, it uh, I, I have a, definitely have a penchant for any sort of movement based FPS, so or first person games in general. So uh, it it checks it checks a lot of my boxes. Now, in what capacity? Now, I know from watching your stream that you've been you've been doing runs, of course. Um, yeah. Beyond that. Are you are you necessarily involved? Because I I haven't I did not go through like the leaderboards to check. Like, are you doing are you doing verification of runs? Have you been doing like moderating discords, anything like that? Like, what is your role in yes. the Ghost Runner community? Yeah, uh, I am uh, I'm part of the moderation team. Um, uh, Meta, who's another FPS runner, he's also uh, he recently got content mod on, for Speedrun.com, which is cool. But when the demo came out, he reached out to me. And was like, hey, do you want to help me with this? I know you're interested, yada yada. So I've been a part of a, uh, I've been a part of moderation uh, for both the Discord and verifying runs, and also running it really actively. So I think I'm like number four on the leaderboard right now. Not that it really matters when a game yeah, comes out two so weeks new. ago, but yeah. but yeah, yeah. So before we go into biographical, I did want to ask you because you know again. I, I mentioned before before asking the question that I I've seen you do this several times. Like I think with control. Uh, Wolfenstein Youngblood. Uh, I mm-hmm. know you were even briefly, you know, interested in, in Doom Eternal, and I wanted to mm-hmm. ask if you had any takes for do's and don'ts when uh, running a new game, like when sort of being involved at the ground level with a new game. Do you feel like there's any things things that you sh- absolutely should or shouldn't do? Um, I, I think the like a big should is is share everything. Um, don't assume other people know anything. Uh. I, I'm always like a huge advocate for like, you know, you found like a like a one second time save, put it like shared with the community. Um, I think that that uh, uh, knowledge sharing is like such a huge part of that initial routing process. Um, another do would be like, especially if it's a smaller game, like make an effort to to form a community or or seek one out. Um, I remember, you know, with with control, uh, especially it. Uh, once once people actually knew that, like, oh, this is the control speedrunning Discord, that's when we just like busted the game wide open. Because I remember there was like a there was like a week's time when we were like, man, this game is like rock solid. We can't we can't figure it out. And then P- and then I think uh, our speedrunner.com page got approved and people got the Discord link. And like two days later, that the we found like a skip for every other level in the game. So you know, <laughs> yeah. Um, so share everything, seek out communities is definitely a definitely a do for me. Um, <clears throat> as far as a don't goes for for getting started, um, I, I you know I don't know that I have any. Um, I I would say, uh, hmm, I would say don't worry about. I, I think this is something I've noticed with Ghost Runner too. Is don't worry about like is don't worry about like world records or like who's got the best time or comparing yourself to other people, especially when a game first comes out. Uh, yeah, we've seen a lot of that in, in Ghost Runner 2 where people get like a time and they're like, oh my god, I got the world record, even though there's one time on the leaderboard, you know, and, 
and uh, there's a lot of like it's that's that whole world record culture thing. That's kind of a that's just kind of a global problem with speedrunning. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, definitely don't. This is kind of a this is kind of a take for for speedrunning as a whole is you can't really if you compare yourself to other people, especially like their improvement rate. That's just you're just setting yourself up for for failure. So because everybody learns differently, things pe people find things hard, people find things easy. Like everybody's different in that way. Yeah, so. no, I think that's that's great advice. Is to is especially if you're trying to get into speedrunning, do not stress yourself out about you know going like, right away. Let's say you're learning a popular game that's well optimized. Don't stress about getting a top time. Yeah, and then, yeah. And then also, if you're trying to get in on a new game, you know, understand that you know you're not like you know I'm I'm in my my mid thirties here. And I got a day job, and I'm not going to stress about getting a top Pretty time. Pretty much, because I because I know much. I also have the discipline, the self discipline to do something two hours a day, much longer than other people are going to be willing to do it. And so, you know, not going to be a top time right away. But if I want to, I can I can get there eventually. And I think that advice That's is is the way to go. It's funny you say that. That's definitely been something I've had to like settle into as I get older. Um, I'm going to be 28 next month, which is weird for me. Uh, but yeah, like. Uh, I one of the things I like about speedrunning is the competitive aspect. Uh, uh, that's a that's a big draw for it for me. Um, so it's definitely something I've had to accept that, like you know, as I get older and like I have more responsibilities, I just don't have time to grind out runs for eight hours a day every day. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Like some of these people are like twenty years old, and you know, like they might be going to school, they might just be living at home, and they have a ton of time to do this, and it's hard, and like it's hard to be competitive with that sometimes. So yeah. it's that's definitely been something I've had to had to kind of like uh will myself into into that mindset so yeah the one other thing I'll, I'll add just because i'm having this experience right now when it comes to new games is also being you know a, a mature adult sometimes too you can identify labor that really needs doing and supply that to the community and yes. you know yep. you'll gain recognition for that and also you know help a lot of other people like right now i'm i'm getting into teardown and people are putting a lot of effort at any percent but no major glitches is, is being left behind and so I'm able to kind of be like, well, you know what? Like, I can just go do this. I can watch a lot of videos, take notes. Like, taking notes is honestly one of my favorite things in speedrunning. So yeah, that's and, fun. And do that labor for people. But well, let's go back in time. We we now know not, we now know how old everyone here is. <laughs> so where does gaming start for you? Is it something from particular friends, family? How does that enter your life? Oh, uh, I'm trying to remember like like my earliest memories with it. Um... You know, I can't. I can't remember the first time. I I, I remember my, my first console was a Nintendo sixty four. Um, I, I don't remember the first time I ever played games. It might have been playing Smash sixty four at a friend's house, but I, I very distinctly remember getting the Star Wars Episode Racer edition of the Nintendo sixty four, which was an awesome. That's an awesome AG racer, by the way, that you can buy on GOG. Oh yeah, uh, it's like it's like actually ridiculously hard and really really fast. I love that game. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, that, that's a that that's. I, I grew up playing a lot of Nintendo 64 stuff. Not a lot of the big hits, surprisingly. Like, I never played Mario 64. I never played Legend of Zelda. I think those were all, like, just a little bit before my time. Like, I started playing, like, late 99, 2000, around then. Um, I ended up... I had a PS1 as well, and I played a lot of Twisted Metal, stuff like that. Um, oh, what's your favorite Twisted Metal? Wait, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> okay, so the one that... Uh, so... Uh, I grew up in a in a Catholic conservative household, so even getting my hands on oh, Twisted Metal at all was a little difficult because all of them. Like, so the one that I had was the one where they were all like toy cars. I forget what it was called. Um, I actually oh, kind of want to look at uh, Small Brawl. Maybe? Small Brawl. Yeah. Small, I think. I think. Let me. Let me. Okay. Let me see. Twisted Metal Small Brawl. I think this was the one. Yeah, yes, okay. yeah, Twisted Metal Small Brawl. That was the one I played the most, yeah. Interesting. Um, yeah, and then uh, eventually, um, I forget, but uh, my mom went, went out of her way to, to like, to fuel my, my video game hobby, which was very, I'm very grateful of her for that. Uh, but I remember, I think kind of my, where, where I kind of like established the games that I liked was probably around 2001, so I was like nine years old. Uh, and I had an Xbox, and if anybody remembers the original Xbox mag, OXM used to send out demo discs with each of their, with a lot of their issues. Um, and so demo disc number one contained a lot of stuff. I think it had Project Gotham, um, it had, uh, had Fusion Frenzy, it had a lot of the games that would become, like, staples, uh, but it also had Halo was one of the demos on there, and they had, and the, and the, 
the genius thing they did was they made Silent Cartographer the demo level. Oh, um, and that I, was the I, demo level. Yeah, I played. I probably played that demo like 100, 200 times. Um, so eventually, I got Halo, and that was kind of like the that was the franchise I grew up with. So um, I had Halo Two and like Xbox Live the day it came out, and you know formed a lot of memories that way. Uh, doing being in like the glitch hunting community there and stuff. So um, I'm always trying to dig up the videos that my you know my clan and I made where we would like uh, you know a new map would come out and we would like try and get outside of it day one or something like that. So and Halo Two had so many cool glitches and stuff you know like uh sword flying and bunny hot or uh, uh, sword flying and uh butterflying and stuff like that so yeah that's really neat you know it's, it's funny to hear your experience of that too because uh halo was a major turning point for me as well and the reason i was able to get an xbox and halo is because my my parents were determined to make confirmation special for me <laughs> and so they gave me an Xbox and Halo, and that just turned me into like the most obnoxious gamer boy for all the rest of high school. <laughs> so hearing hearing that you had a Catholic upbringing, I'm sure you can appreciate the uh, yes. surprise twist of that. Um, yes, absolutely. With with Halo Two, you said you were making uh, glitch videos. Now, Chris, that would have been you know we're talking you know Halo Two comes I think at the end of 2004, so mid 2000s. Yep. Now you were you were finding glitches mostly just for, to say you could do it. Obviously, I don't think you were you wouldn't have been aware of any sort of form of speedrunning at that point, right? No, I okay. wasn't aware of speedrunning in, until early 2010s. Okay. Um, but yeah, I was a uh, yeah, I was just it was a clan. Uh, uh, Shoutouts to any of these people if they happen to be watching it. I've tried to get in contact with them over the years. Uh, we were called uh, so the the clan leader was the Chicken Man 69, Good. and nice. our clan and our clan our clan was the Chick Crew. And so we would uh, we would just record videos of us getting out of like Zanzibar, uh, coagulation, turf, whatever. Like we got out of containment the, the first day that it that it released as like the DLC, and we would just post videos uh, on on our website, I think, which was which was the the chickcrew.org or something like that. Anyway, but yeah, I have uh, I, I those are those are some of my favorite memories of my childhood is like coming home from school and like getting on Halo Two, Xbox Live, and hanging out with. Uh, that group of friends. It was Chicken Man sixty nine and Deprevums and Farty Art and uh, uh, JRM Grayson, uh, uh, Doomer Gamer. Like I, I can, I, I still, I, I still have all of their tags in my head. So yeah, definitely, definitely my favorite childhood gaming memories. Yeah. I'd say no, that that was definitely an era of gaming too. I think like the 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 mid to late two thousands when you had either like dedicated servers or small communities and a lot of first person shooters. And so you would have that because I, I you know I, I could I could rattle off a bunch of names too. Um going forward from there, uh a question I like to seek out is sort of a turning point. Now I think you described that your your mother was supportive of your your gaming habit and you know helping you get stuff. Was there a point where you really took ownership of it and when i say that i mean like you either you know were old enough to get a job or you otherwise saved up money such that at some point a console became or or a pc became entirely yours and yours alone um i, I would say that wasn't really until late high school and then after i moved out mm -hmm. i would say yeah um i would say pretty much once i went off to college that's when i really kind of took ownership of it that's when I got into PC gaming and things like League of Legends and stuff like that around like 2011, 2012. So, which was uh, also when I, when I discovered speedrunning. So, yeah, okay. yeah. Well, um, oh, go ahead. Oh no, I think that I've okay. finished my thought. Yeah. Uh, so then the next thing I was going to ask then, and you've already kind of gotten to it, is that you know we're going to be talking about speedruns, which is do predominantly single player thing, but already Halo Two multiplayer, Xbox Live has come into it. You just mentioned League of Legends. Uh, what have been some big uh, multiplayer games, or even we'll call it phases, uh, you know, that, for you over the years? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Halo 2 and Halo 3 and Halo Reach, you know, those were all big ones. Um, I remember buying, uh, I forget if this was the Halo Reach or the Halo 3 beta, but uh, Microsoft packaged uh, uh, the beta invite with that one game, Crackdown, on Xbox 360. If you remember that, I forget what it was, but I bought that game solely to get into the beta. And that I, was like I a big briefly thing. looked into speedrunning that game, and the jumping is not fun. Just putting that out there. <laughs> yeah, and, and the Crackdown actually ended up being like a really fun game. But anyway, uh, yeah, some other phases I had over the years. Uh, I don't know if you if you remember if you, if you touched Red Faction Guerrilla at all. Oh, that's a that super one, fun game. Red, Red Faction Guerrilla is one of my favorite games of all time, um, and I sweated the multiplayer for that game. It, it was like summer. It, when did it come out? Two thousand nine. Summer of two thousand nine. I like. 
That, that, that's still one of the most original multiplayer experiences I think I've ever had with the backpack pickups and the destructible environments. Um, and the weapon balance was surprisingly good. Um, yeah, I remember, uh, yeah, like, I mean, it never turned on anything because the game wasn't very big, but, you know, like, my, my proudest achievement back in the day was like, man, I'm top 10 in, on the on the KD leaderboards for Red Faction Guerrilla, and that's like, you know, that's that's my that's my gaming achievement. Um, yeah, I got into, uh, I, I would say, as I got uh, older, I got really into, into Smash, um, especially competitive Smash. That was probably, that was what got me started streaming, too. Mm -hmm. um, so I was heavily, heavily involved in Project M. Yeah, you know, um, I've noticed that in your Twitter bio that it said you were involved in, in Project M. And I, I was going to, you know, feel free to conclude as much or as little detail about that. I know some of the uh, the politics around Project M are can be very divisive. So, you know, don't feel like you have to go into it. But, like, certainly if there's anything you know, that you feel like you'd want to share, I, I'd be very curious yeah. to hear about it. Yeah, Project M was a huge part of my life. Um, I, I started with, uh, you know, I started with Brawl. And then kind of moved into so this is just me playing in my friend group. We played mm -hmm. we played a lot of brawl. Um, we went to some local tournaments. Um, and like every, and like everybody else's story, like oh I could beat all my friends, and then you go to a tournament, you get smashed. That's that's how that's how every competitive smasher story starts. Um, and then we played some sixty four, but eventually ended up finding Project M and showed it to all them. And uh, I just got like obsessed with it. Um, and so I started holding uh, tournaments locally. Um, and I started traveling nationally and doing a lot of commentary nationally. Um, and then eventually I got uh, accepted into the development team for that. Um, and I worked primarily as a play tester uh, and content creator. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, so, I, yeah, I was really, if anybody remembers from back in those days, I was really involved with, uh, with Ness specifically. And so I, uh, there's like a few things I could point to uh, back before like development restarted on it. And it was just Project Plus now. Where, mm -hmm. uh, like with like a lot of Ness's changes in the like 3.5, 3.6, where I was like, that was... I was like a big proponent of that, you know. Um, but yeah, as far as uh, I have a, I, I, I'm not sure how much I if, of like I, I've heard a lot of stuff from other former development team members about what happened to Project M over the years, um, and I'm not sure how much of it is legit and how much of it isn't. Um, all, all I can really say is like I, I fucking I hate Nintendo, dude. I really dislike yeah. Nintendo for for a lot of the ways that they handled PM. Um, they were used to. It was at the point that like you couldn't have Project M on friendly setups at tournaments mm -hmm. because Nintendo like they wouldn't even give the tournaments any money. They just put their name like yeah. on. They were they're like you can display your name on your tournament overlay, but you can't have Project M at your tournament. And they, so like people would have friendlies like on the on the floor, and they would people would come and like TOs would have to be like, yo, you can't do that. It was just like it, it was, the the erasure of Project M from like the Smash community is like. Probably some of the most upset I've ever been in gaming. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. No, I I think I remember hearing about that too because I I used to be a big viewer of fighting game stuff, predominantly Marvel vs. Capcom. But I you know I, I did watch a lot of Smash, which was you know a lot of fun to watch, and uh, and and hearing about those kinds of stories, especially the 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 project by Nintendo to sort of give so little and ask for so much, which is yep. you know just so galling. Like if yep. it, you know if they really like rolled out money. I would I would almost be willing to accept it, but just as you said, it was so often you know labels as opposed to real meaningful support of fans, which again Nintendo still doesn't do, and it's still you know we, yeah now now we have you know buy our games before March thirty first twenty twenty right so it's yeah <laughs> great yeah. thanks yeah uh, so that's yeah that that's that's an ongoing thing um, now but really interesting to me I you know one one more one more thing about this Smash part I. In my brain, as someone who wasn't uh, playing Smash too much myself, I just always thought that so much of Project M were folks who, you know, who moved on from Melee and wanted something that was a successor to Melee. But you didn't have that route, right? Because you were coming no, really no. from Brawl. Yeah, um, I would say a lot of we, there was a thing a little bit of that, um, but uh, uh, during its time, especially in its heyday, there was a lot of pushback against PM from a lot of the hardcore Melee folks. Mm -hmm. There was definitely like a pretty big divide there. So I think there were definitely some people that enjoyed Melee and wanted a successor to it. Uh, the people that lived and breathed Melee like did not give a shit. Sure, they, sure. They, 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 they couldn't, uh, they could not care less about PM. Um, and so there's definitely some pushback there. But yeah, um, I would say, I mean, I can't really say anything confidently or, 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 or sorry, with any sort of like data backing it. But 
I would estimate that, you know, at least like 50% of the people that got onto PM didn't have any experience with Melee or anything like that. So, um, and, and Project M ended up, be, ended up becoming very much like its own, its own thing. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. I think once, uh, yeah, well, once once the development team realized that we shouldn't be making the game for melee players and making it for people that like PM, that's when the game got really good. So yeah. Cool. All right. When you when you mentioned Red Faction Guerrilla, you you jogged a part of my brain that remembered an old tweet that you had made a while back because I think there was a there was a meme going around, which was like name four games. I was that, thinking of that, that when you I love it up. and like that no one else would know or something, and I wanted to, one of those I think was Red Faction Guerrilla. Uh, yes. Another one I wanted to ask about was how did you become a proponent of metal arms? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was uh, that was one of the games of my childhood for sure. Um, yeah, I don't. Uh, I just really liked that game. I just really loved it. It was really fun growing up. I liked the humor. I liked the characters. Like, um, I've always been into to like robots and mechs and stuff in in, in the video game space. Um, yeah, it was just fun. It was, uh, the multiplayer was a lot of fun. I remember <laughs> I used to go on, uh, when did this game, when did that game come out? Like 2004, 2005, 2006? Yeah, I it's remember. a six-gen game, so I think it's yeah, on, like, Xbox I, I, uh, PS2. I, I went on the MLG forums, and I was like, yo, is there any, like, MLG tournaments for, for Metal Arms multiplayer? <laughs> That's, so... That's very uh, pure. Yeah, yeah. Um... Yeah, I, I haven't played that game in. I mean, it's going to be like fifteen years, Probably, but yeah. I have a lot of very positive memories with that game. Um, and the the campaign for it had like a lot of really interesting, unique moments. Um, one of my favorites that I remember a lot was when, uh, like, I, again, I can't remember specifics about mm -hmm. the game, but you end up going like undercover as one of the uh, enemy faction robots, and you have to like sit through their. Uh, what would you call it? It's like a uh, what, what's the term I'm looking for? They're like testing to see if the robots are all obedient and stuff. But you're undercover, so you have to like. So they're tell they're gonna say like raise your right hand, and you yeah. have to like follow like all their motions like Simon and stuff says like that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. It, I, yeah I, anyway, I yeah, I love Metal Arms. That game's awesome. All right, let's let's talk about. So we we touched on this before that I think Project M kind of became your gateway into doing some streaming stuff, and that, that was also maybe the time. When you first learned about speedrunning, what's your first exposure to speedrunning? Yep, like a lot of other folks, um, I so I got into, I guess to, to kind of roll this back a little bit, I got into League of Legends in uh, 2011, and then I wanted to get better at League of Legends, uh, and so I started watching League of Legends streamers. So uh, when Own3D was a thing, or Owned, or whatever, uh, I watched a lot of people on there, and then I started watching people on Twitch as well. Um, and eventually I was like, hey, Twitch is pretty cool. I wonder what other people stream on here. And I found Lethal Frag shortly after that when they're doing their two-year live stream challenge. Um, and then eventually that led to, I think Lethal Frag one day was talking about how like crazy Siglemic's Sigle Twitch chat was. Um, so this was probably late 2011, early 2012 was when I, uh, like a lot, so a lot of other folks, my first exposure was Siglemic speedrunning Super Mario 64. Um, I used to watch him do that all the time, all the time. And then it was very, very shortly after that that I found GDQs. Um, so that was uh, that was my first exposure, uh, just watching Siglemic reset to OG Cannon List like 50 times in a row. Uh, uh, yeah, um, and then watching GDQs way back and, and the bonus streams and everything. Um, it, w it wouldn't be until... Uh, I think, like, briefly, in, like, 2014, I tried speedrunning Super Mario Sunshine, but, like, I hadn't ever really played the game casually, so I didn't have a lot of attachment to it, so that didn't last very long. But, yeah, I, I, it wouldn't be until Titanfall 2 that I actually started speedrunning something, so. And, okay, so now, all right, so, well, Titanfall 2, maybe we'll, we'll talk about a little more. What, is there any particular story to what pushed you over the edge for, because when you, when, okay, so maybe when you did Sunshine, did you do anything like recording, streaming? With, I streamed it. You I just streamed, streamed it, okay. yeah. Yeah, I was friends with, uh, because I frequented so many Mario 64 streams, I was, uh, and, and there was quite a bit of crossover between mm. SM64 speedrunning and, like, Smash, Project M. Um, I was friends with, like, a lot of people kind of that occupied that, that space, um, and so I went from Project M and also tried speedrunning Sunshine. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I just like start, try to 
I remember I had I had no idea what I was doing. So I was like, I'm going to put up the world record video and just try and copy that. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't get very far yeah. doing that. And people were like, oh, you haven't even played, you haven't even beaten this game casually? You should do that first. So I was like, oh, I probably should. And I tried doing that and I was like, eh, I just don't really enjoy this game a whole lot. That's fine. You know, 3D platformers like that uh, th have never really been mm -hmm. yeah, a huge yeah, thing yeah. for me. It was whatever. So, um, but yeah, yeah, I streamed it. I streamed it. I, I doubt. There, I mean, I don't think there might be like I might have like a highlight from it somewhere on my archives, but right. yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll get to we'll get to the story of Titanfall two uh, in a little bit, but now I want to get some quick takes. Uh, so you know, you've you've speed run a few games now. Uh, of all the games that you've speed run, what's your favorite run? Like of all the games that I've I yes, ran that myself, you've done, yes. Oh, that's yeah. Uh, it's definitely Titanfall two. Okay. Um. I've been thinking about this a lot lately, though. I mean, I have like uh, what thirty five hundred hours in Titanfall two, so I put I put the time in. Um, uh, but I picked up Halo three uh, back in August as well, and I like am very passionate about the Halo three run, and I find myself thinking about it a lot. So um, I think like with Titanfall two, you know, like it's uh, that like I, I I can't confidently say anything else is like my favorite compared to titanfall just because like you know it almost feels like a like a sunk cost fallacy sort of thing we're like <laughs> i put so much time into this it has to be my favorite i really be. do love that i really do love that game and we can talk more about sure. what, what what's yeah, great well, about it later yeah. um but yeah I, I would say it's still it's still my favorite um probably my favorite run i've ever done actually uh, uh like just like a single run. Mm -hmm. I really, really enjoyed my Wolfenstein Youngblood run with TFC at AGDQ 2020. That's a very positive memory of mine. Um, I think about that a lot. And I've probably watched the VOD like six or seven times just because it's a good, it's just because it's a good memory. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. All right. I need the flip one though. I need, of all the speedruns that you've done, what is your least favorite? My least favorite? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think. Um, let me, you know, I, I feel like I'm just going to pull up my speedrun.com profile too. Just so I like, if there, if, if, there, if there's anything I've forgotten about, it's probably that one. <laughs> anything that you've buried. Yeah. It's hard to say, like there were some games I ran that I didn't really, um, <laughs> I could say doom eternal, but I feel like that's, that's just kind of, I should, I should just avoid that. One. <laughs> <laughs> um, my least favorite run, I think that I put a substantial amount of time into, uh, was probably impulsion um impulsion or or yeah i would probably go with impulsion i don't know if anybody really heard about this game and like it's not bad it's not a bad run um impulsion is a it's like a first person platformer that uh it has this mechanic where you have two guns that shoot different like bubbles and the blue bubble makes you go faster and jump higher and then the red bubble you can use to like do platforming and like jump from area to area and you can use that as like a double jump and stuff like that so um it's like a fun game it's a fine game um it's just like it's very simple and there's not a ton of speed tech or like ways to kind of like break it outside of an intended setting and um it's extremely punishing like there are no checkpoints throughout the levels and some of the levels are like you know minute minute and a half long so uh, i remember putting like I think back at the back when I was running it a lot, I was just kind of looking for something else aside from Titanfall. And anyway, like it's fine. It's a fine run. It's, I just, fine. it's probably if yeah. I had to if I had to like pick one where I was like, man, it mm -hmm. would probably be that. That was probably my least favorite. Yeah. How, how about a game that you would like to speed run, uh, but either you know you haven't gotten around to it or it just doesn't fit in with what you're doing right now on stream? Uh, Half Life Two. I would love to run Half-Life 2 No Void Clip. Uh, that run has organically become something that I think is really, really cool. But I look at that and I see like the learning curve there and just how much of its own monster it is. And I uh, just like, I don't want to touch that. Um, it's just like, and I've talked to, I mean, I'm, I'm friends with a lot of runners and source friends and there aren't a ton of like new runner resources available for that game. Um, and I think that's very much just its own, it's its own, it's its own thing. And you have to put a ton of time into that to be like, halfway decent so not a commitment i want to make sure sure all right so here's a question i like to ask too especially if people who uh have now incorporated speed running and streaming in some way into sort of you know what they do you know making ends meet day to day 
was there a certain point for you when streaming kind of ascended to being, uh, you know, a, a, a part-time job or, you know, some something like that, some turning point that you would tie that to? Yeah, um, it, it, yeah, a lot of the, it's all, it all comes back to Titanfall 2. It was definitely Titanfall 2. Um, especially when uh, I ended up getting record for the game and grinding it a lot. Um, that was when I, so yeah, I, I got record for Titanfall and started getting like, uh, started getting good at it around the time that affiliate, the affiliate program rolled out. So that all kind of coincided pretty well. Um, I would say when I, uh, and, and I took it pretty seriously throughout that entire time. Um, but it was, uh, I think, I mean, the biggest turning point, uh, is always going to be my GDQX 2018 run. Mm -hmm. That was, that was the run that were, you know, I, like I blew up, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I, I, I got partner piggybacking off the back of that, um, and that was uh that was the big turning point for sure um i had gone through a lot of really unfortunate shit like right before gdqx and everything like that and my stream had like just like plummeted and everything and i uh i was just like if gdqx doesn't go well i'm probably gonna quit streaming and then it ended up being like probably i think it's the most watched or like second or third most watched run from that event um, at an event where Rom Scout did Sympathy of the Night completely blindfolded, which is still crazy to me. Um, and yeah, I, I got the, uh, yeah, just got super, I super blew up after that. So, cool. yeah. No, that, that's, that's a great point to hear. I, I, I find it very interesting because that, you know, speaking of things that maybe people fixate too much on, you know, when does a GDQ appearance affect, you know, your ability to grow an audience? Um, and it's been interesting to hear from guests, you know, when that when because you gotta understand that it's always about it's a multiple it's a lot of factors right it's not just being yeah GDQ. i could talk a lot about that i could talk right. a lot about there's that. a lot of factors yeah. going on there um but let, let's let's keep i didn't want to get to uh before we really dive into time vault two there's a few other kind of yeah. like, <laughs> speed running broad takes that i, I like to get in. Absolutely. One, of the ones, one of the ones actually so you might be the inspiration for why i started adding this next question because i think i was <laughs> just reading maybe it was like your channel info or something and i noticed that you actually had a lot of information about your approach to health and maintaining good health mm, mm, in mm, speed mm. running uh, and so i wanted to ask uh you know just sort of what is your attitude towards you know things like uh, you know avoiding stress from repetitive motion sitting being sedentary like what what are your thoughts about health and speed running and streaming yeah, they definitely. I mean, they definitely go hand in hand. Um, I didn't take it seriously till I started suffering from RSI, and I was like, "Oh shit, this is like not good." Um, yeah, so I, I take it really seriously, and I encourage other folks to take it seriously too. Because, um, yeah, I mean, like like comfort level, posture, uh, uh, health are all. I mean, if, if you want to like speed run a game for any amount of time, like maintaining yourself is going to be really important to doing that. So, um, yeah, uh, I. Uh, I, you know, I may, I, I don't know. I, I just take all the basic approaches to it. Where like I make sure I have proper posture. You know, mm -hmm. I try and aim with my arm and not with my wrist. You know, uh, I do. Uh, I have like a whole document that I wrote after I uh, kind of like got a handle on my RSI. Uh, that you know, if anybody ever goes to my stream and type exclamation RSI, brings up the document. But um, I do like stretches. Uh, usually, I would say. At the start of a stream, and then usually every three hours after that, if I if I'm streaming, um, I do like I have a series of wrist stretches that I do. Um, I have like compression armbands and wristbands that I use that just provide compression around my wrists uh, to help prevent strain over long periods of time. Um, yeah, uh, there's some. I'm definitely not the expert on it, and there are a lot of folks, uh, especially in the Titanfall 2 community, that that. Uh, uh, are very knowledgeable about this as well. Um, there's like a there's a book that they recommend reading. I forget what it's called. I think simply the SM64 runner is a big advocate of it as well. I forget what it's called, but mm, okay. they said that helped them a lot with their stuff. So yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, I mean, no, I, of course, if you're listening or, or watching this at later after the fact, take it seriously. You know, take it from <laughs> take it from the old guys too. All right, you know, you don't yeah. want to <laughs> you don't want to mess around for whatever reason on this on Overboost. I feel like I have either people who are college age or like people who are you know were are now late 20s early 30s and um and there's like a big <laughs> there's a big split between the two when i when i asked asked the health question so oh there you go 
uh, the I, mind body prescription. Yeah, the mind yes, body that's prescription what the book is called. Yeah, yeah. So make sure to check. And also, you look up other resources. Uh, you know, stretches things like that. I, I think you include as a part of you know the little bit of information in your stream, like the exact compression gloves you use. I think right or yeah, yeah. The uh, the compression uh, compression wristbands I use. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Okay, but yeah, take take all that seriously. Uh, all right, one more before before I ask, how did you learn about Titanfall Two? I wanted to ask <laughs> an, another topical thing. I, I, I'm gonna have to retire this question soon because it's, it's not gonna be topical very soon, I think. But uh, recently, there was big Speedrun.com news uh, where Speedrun.com mm -hmm. ownership changed hands uh, from PAX team over to this company Elo, and I noticed a lot of the takes initially fell on I think one of two camps. Uh, there were takes saying that, like, hey, this website grew beyond the capacity of pack and team to maintain it, given the amount of stress on it. And it's good that, you know, maybe we're going to have some more engineering know-how and support to make the, the website run better. But at the same time, a lot of folks were concerned, uh, and specifically with Elo having sites like Dota Buff, where over time they allege, I, I haven't investigated this myself, but they allege that some features became available only behind a paywall and that uh, some mm. things, especially things like API access, you know, stuff like that, that's really essential to making some of the tools that we use as speedrunners, uh, that would, that would become complicated. And I was curious if you had any, uh, you know, thoughts about this topic going forward. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely, uh, I mean, I can see both sides of that, but I'm mm -hmm. definitely on the camp that I, I feel like it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like speedrun.com from a functionality perspective has been pretty poor pretty much the entire time I've used it, you know? I mean, it's an entire meme that the site goes down. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. on, a, on, a, like on a very regular basis. Um, and like the stats page on a lot of on a lot of runs is all messed up and stuff. And there are a lot of features that would be nice to have that, that just don't exist, you know, for whatever reason. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm definitely, uh, I'm hopeful, I would say. I don't know if I have like a lot of strong feelings about it, um, and to be to be completely fair, I, I w I'm not aware of their history with sites like Dota Buff or anything like that. Um, but that's definitely concerning to hear. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, um, I yeah I speedrun.com, I you know for better or for worse is an is an extremely big part of speedrunning as a whole these days. Um, and so I think if I, I I I feel like it's in more capable hands now, and I hope it ends up being for the best personally yeah. yeah no it's i i i think everyone wants <laughs> everyone wants the good things to happen for sure you know yeah if, if, it, if it can be successful and you know widely accessible under elo then then god bless for sure um all right we, we need to talk about about titanfall 2 how did you first learn <laughs> about titanfall 2 this game seems important to you yeah it's it's definitely it's like the brian auto game for sure um yeah, uh, the, the, like it, it's come up so many times already, just because like everything for me with speedrunning like centers back to that pretty much. You know, um, it's it's like an extre it's been an extremely huge part of my life and speedrunning and streaming and whatever. Um, so uh, you know, I remember I did, uh, I remember the first Titanfall coming out, and I didn't really play it at all. I saw some gameplay of it. You know, it's kind of like whatever. Um, Otherwise, otherwise forgettable for me. Didn't pay any attention to it whatsoever. Um, I think it was only on Xbox One, if I recall. I didn't have an Xbox One, and I also didn't have a nice PC at the time. So I just wasn't able to play it. Um, I remember... So for Titanfall 2, I had just built my PC that I'm still using uh, earlier in that year, 2016. Um, and then they had... Uh, I saw like a bunch of really good reviews for it. Um, and then they had the free multiplayer weekend. I think it was like uh, early November, 2016, something like that. Um, yeah, and so I played the free multiplayer weekend, and I was like, "Holy shit, this, this is awesome!" You know, um, uh, like a, a, a freedom of expression through like movement is really something I, I love in games. I've uh, I've always been about that, and so. Uh, you know, I remember playing Titanfall, and I was like, "Man, if I can like think something up, I can probably do it with like the movement system that's in place here." And I didn't even know about air strafing at the time. I didn't even know there was a source game. I didn't know there was air strafing. I didn't know about any of this stuff. I was just like, "Wow, I can just do whatever I want." Um, and so that's that's kind of what got me into it. And then I started uh, getting into the competitive scene for it because I ended up randomly queuing with a competitive player in a CTF game that uh, just kind of like 
was we we got along really well and they told me about the competitive scene and i started playing in tournaments for that and everything um and then uh as, as you get to higher and higher level play in titanfall 2 movement becomes a bigger and bigger thing um and competitive play now is like completely bonkers compared to how it was back then um but it's so it's really cool to see how that's evolved anyway um yeah as i started playing more and more uh, aggressively in multiplayer games i was like huh i want to get better at the movement so i started doing that and of course i was like oh i wonder if there's a speed run for this game and like of course there was um and so i looked up the record at the time and it was an angry albino with a 134 flat um and what i did to get started with that was uh, what was it? I watched the world record video, um, which wasn't extremely optimized at the time because there were only like maybe a dozen people running it and the game was like three months old. So it was pretty fresh still. Um, so which, which is why this worked better than doing what I did with Super Mario Sunshine because <laughs> that game had like decades of optimization or a decade of optimization behind it. Anyway, um, so uh, yeah, I, I just like watched the record. I took notes. On like every on any little thing I thought I would forget, I just did a did a bunch of note taking, and then I propped the notepad up next to my monitor, and then just like did a run. And it helps with Titanfall 2 because it's naturally a really linear game, so it's very very hard to get extremely lost or not know what to do. Um, so I just like played through as fast as I could, and then I referenced the notes when I thought I did, and tried to do everything I could from memory. Um, my first time ever was like a two hour seventeen minute. 34 or 45 second run something like that it was a 217 something um yeah and that was kind of a that was the beginning of it uh i started yeah I, I think when i started running i was probably only doing like two or three runs like a week or something like that and there would mm -hmm. be times i would just go without playing for a while um and i think as i got better and better and better i started doing it more often which is weird to think about now when i you know i'll do i'll do a stream session that's like eight hours long and of like you know like ghost runner and attempt like two three dozen runs something like that you know <laughs> to think about that and then like think back man i used to only do like one or two speed runs a week <laughs> you know what i mean it's 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 funny in retrospect but yeah that was uh that was the beginning of it for sure yeah now at what point because i feel like uh you know at some point especially with you know gdqx and and sgdq like you you know you really kind of i think almost become i feel like weird saying this but like almost like the face of titanfall 2 speedrunning like just because i think you're you're very prominent streaming wise and you're very very you know known for it because of the gdq appearances but going into the the titanfall 2 discord i mean you're very active there too at what point did you become an active member of the community in terms of helping with you know because i i know i briefly looked into learning titanfall 2 and there were very very good new runner resources uh, the best of the best made by uh, yeah. you and particularly <laughs> i want to compliment the 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 first level with the where you actually this must have been so much work to do like easy strats middle strats like hard strats and to include all of that edited it together you know into a single tutorial video is really really impressive and so i'm curious how you fell into that role yeah um i think that's just something that gradually happened over time um as i got better at the game and got more involved with it um yeah, I think like the the first time I ended up making tutorials, uh, which some of them are still up, but they're they're very old. Um, I think like my PB at the time was, you know, it, it, I I, had, I hadn't had record for very long, basically. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's just something I kind of fell into as I got more and more passionate about it. Um, and the community at the time didn't really have. I don't know any like leaders, and I put big quotes on that. Yeah, big um, quotes. Yeah, I definitely. Yeah, um, di yeah, didn't really have any any leaders or figureheads or whatever. Um, and shortly after I took the record, um, the person that had it before me, uh, just kind of, just kind of like fell out of the community. Like they, they just kind of lost interest. Um, so I guess there was just kind of like a blank space there. And uh, it was something I found myself really passionate about that I wanted others to be involved with. And so I just wanted to make it as easy as possible for that to happen. Um, yeah. And so eventually I ended up being, uh, I think, you know, I think enough, enough, uh, like enough other people, you know, noticed the effort I put in and um, they uh, were trying to 
Blood Thunder was active at the time. Well, not active, but he was like the mod, one of the mods at the time for the community, and he wasn't really doing it anymore. So eventually, people bugged him enough to make me a, to make me a mod on speedrun.com for it. Um, and I think that yeah, it's it just kind of like it just it just kind of happened that way. I mm. think as my as my uh, uh, obsession with the game grew and my passion for it grew, um, which is, it's kind of funny now. Is uh, it's almost kind of um, I, I definitely feel like for a while I was the you know. I don't know, like the face of Titanfall Two, but um, I, I feel like as as time has gone on, I think that I think I've I've really kind of uh, uh, diminished in in like that role, if you want to give it that. Mm. And yo, I, I definitely uh, feel like Put me Titanfall in. is kind of coming into a place where I always felt like. I almost kind of like took ownership of it, where I felt like I I needed to put effort into it to keep this community running. You know what I mean? And to uh, and to keep it active, and I, I think uh, especially in the last six months or so, there are a lot of like really really awesome people uh, that are in the community now, uh, like Fizzy and Zweek and Cash Mayo and Tascanos. Just just to, like that's just off the top of my head, um, that have gotten very involved with like community resources and making the game more accessible. Uh, that I, I I almost feel like, I almost kind of feel like I'm like you know. Handing, uh, what's the would be the term like, hand, uh, kind of like, kind of like a like a like a changing of the guard mm. sort of thing. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah. So, um, passing the torch, passing the torch. Somebody said in the chat. Yeah. So it's been uh, it's been kind of humbling, I would say. So, but yeah, there's a lot of really good people in there, and I feel like the community is finally at a point where it's big and it's popular enough to be self-sustaining. And like, you know, if I if I decide that I don't want to play the game anymore, like it's not going to like crash and burn or something like that. So, yeah. 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 You know, that's a really good point too. Um, the, that sort of time, like when you're maybe ready to move on from something, but uh, you know, are there people who are going to have that sort of um, like institutional knowledge? Like, you know, even if you had left and there was no one, there would be videos and things like that available. Uh, but there's sometimes a live human being, there's nothing so you can substitute for a live human being that can answer your yeah. questions. Uh, and you know, to have you know enough people, other people involved in it is is really really good. You know, I, and I think that's especially I I I, ha I would wonder if we asked you know people who run smaller games. Like I don't know, do you feel like any of the other games that you've run where there, maybe there's a smaller community that you know if suddenly you just disappeared off the internet, uh, no one would be able to learn I don't know Young Blood or something like that. You know? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Um... It's it's hard to say. I you know I definitely uh yeah I don't know um I don't know how to answer that one I think mm -hmm. uh, I I don't think like if I disappeared off the face yeah. of, uh, of you know like like it would be it'd be impossible to learn you know mm -hmm. um I think I I just felt like for a while that like if I wasn't putting effort into it people wouldn't be paying attention you know um or like it, you know uh that it wouldn't uh. Or like there wouldn't be any progression with it. Yeah, so like, that's speak, the thing. Like, you know? I, I feel like that's my biggest fear is that you know, if you left something, some some else, someone else would come along and, and give it the love it deserves, but they'd have to reinvent fire first, uh, yeah. or rediscover yeah, and, the and, wheel. And, and you, yes, you don't want to, you don't want them to have to do that. You want them to, exactly. to succeed. Exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and I feel like we have uh, so many like established people in Titanfall now that are uh, that have like made it into like a. Yeah, I feel like there's enough like established people in there that are, that are like equally as passionate about the game that like it's going to be okay for a long time. Awesome. So, yeah. All right. So, about about the the run itself, I I want to give you an open-ended opportunity to do one of two things. Either tell me about a, you know, technique or trick that you think is just your favorite thing, you love doing it every time, it makes you so hype, or alternatively, if there's something you discovered or contributed to the route that you would like to brag about. Please can I, do Can so. I do both? You can do, can both. I do both. You can do okay, both. Okay, okay. Yeah, uh, for people that haven't watched the Titanfall 2 speedrun, uh, it's a source game. So if you're, uh, if you don't know what like a, like anything about source runs, I don't know if you've seen anything like, you know, Quake or anything like that, but air strafing, moving in the air through turns, uh, building speed like through taking these big long arcs. Um, so it's got all of the nuance of air strafing, plus a lot of its own specific quirks that are really, really interesting that I could talk about like forever. Uh, and it also has like a full fledged parkour system that has a ton of depth behind it as well. So, um, just like the Titanfall 2, like as a whole, just has really, 
it has a lot of mechanical depth um, that I really feel only in the last year we've really started kind of digging into. And this game has been ran for, for four years now. And I feel like only in the last year we've really like got into the, that nitty gritty shit. Um, yeah, so I, I mean, I don't know. It's hard to pick like like one thing that that feels super sick every time. Um, I, I would say like maybe a, a Return Zipless on, on the Beacon Chapter 3. Uh, Return Zipless is... It has like a it's it's a bunch of tricks all in one, but it, or I would say you know maybe we'll call it hyper ziplet. We'll, we'll go with the hyper ziplet variant. Um, it's a bunch of tricks all in one, but it has like a big name. Um, so it's like a it's a damage boost with like this gravity. It's the you, you, there's something called a gravity star in Titanfall two that's like a it creates a gravity well and then it like it explodes, and uh, it does just enough damage to you not to kill you, but to also give you like a huge fucking boost. Um, and so it's it's really, really, a, it's a really important trick that saves like 16 seconds or something like that. So it's a gravity star boost followed by a bunch of wall kicks. And wall kicks in Titanfall 2 are when you make contact with the wall and then you jump off it within three ticks of touching it. Um, and so when you jump off it within three ticks, you get a speed boost or you maintain your speed if you're like a little late. So um, just those constant, like really quick inputs. So it's a so damage boost and then kick, 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 like all the way down. And it's a it's a really long string. I think there's like five or six different wall kicks you have to do to get from point A to point B. And it takes about, I think the whole sequence is around 10 seconds long. So it's a very long trick. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a really cool variant of it that we call hyper zipless, which is actually slower. It's just a swag strat. Uh, but during this sequence, if you've played the Beacon Chapter 3 in Titanfall 2, there's a, a level where you have a gun that shoots electricity, basically, and you're using it to turn on all these switches. Um, and they'll move platforms around. And one of the platforms that you shoot rotates uh, upward at like a 90 degree angle. And uh, momentum preservation like is a thing in Titanfall 2. So if you jump off that platform while it's moving upward, you'll carry all the speed to go like straight up in the air. Um, and Titanfall 2 is really weird where you get that speed for both the first and the second jump. So you could be going really fast, like uh, 80 kilometers an hour. And then you also hit the platform that's rotating up. And you get that huge first launch, and then you come down to the bottom of the arc, and then you jump again, and you get the whole thing again. It just looks really cool. Um, my favorite, my favorite contribution to Titanfall Two, probably the one I'm most proud of, uh, is a trick that we call uh, FTL or Faster Than Light. Um, in the level uh, Effect and Cause Chapter One, at the very end, uh, uh, there Effect and Cause Chapter One is a level that's all about like really weird. Uh, uh, time space continuum shifts and breaks and stuff like that and so as you run through the game or the level there's a bunch of scripted time shifts and at the very end there's a bridge that extends across like the top of the play area um, that you have to walk through and as you're walking through it time is shifting like crazy um, and if you if you try to like just go fast through it it is extremely easy to uh, it's not a soft lock but we call it a soft lock uh, where it, the, the game will stop doing the scripted time shifts and you get like stuck in the wrong timeline, and uh, it's faster to reset checkpoint. But if you didn't want to reset checkpoint, it would take you like forty-five seconds to get back to that point, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and so for the longest time, when I had started running, we had theorized ways to get through there fast enough without, uh, you know, without soft locking. You know, we did a bunch of weird damage or like or like frag grenade boosts and satchel charge boosts, and tried setting it up in a bunch of weird ways. Um, and it just wasn't happening. Um, and I remember one time, uh, I think it was late 2018, mid 2018. Um, I was messing around with in the, in the level following it. There are these like laser grids on the level that you can run into, and they kind of like shoot you out really fast. And you can, uh, if you hit them at the right angle, you can you can manipulate them to shoot you off in a direction. Um, so I was like, okay, what if I took that and applied that to the laser grid that's present right before that bridge back in the level before? Um, and so I think I had just gotten like a record in our no cutscenes category, and uh, I was like, "Yeah, I want to, I want to try this out. I want to give this a shot." Um, and so I think I spent the better part of like three, three to four hours, uh, like trying to find an exact spot I could stand in this laser grid, and then jump at the right time to have it shoot me at that like exact precise angle to shoot down this, uh, to shoot down this hallway or this bridge. Um, and eventually, like, it, I mean, eventually it worked. Uh, you like stand at this one spot. Uh, you go hit the trigger. You walk backwards, 
and then right when time shifts, you jump, and if, you, if you're standing at this one specific spot and you jump, you air strafe to the left, and then you shoot a guy, you maintain this massive amount of speed for probably like five or six seconds that allows you to get through everything, like just barely without getting stuck in the time shifts and make it to the other side and only saves like seven seconds but it's like probably <laughs> it's probably the cool one of the coolest tricks in the whole run and definitely like my like if i could point to anything where i was like yeah i'm proud of this it's that one no that's so, really cool yeah. that's that's really neat it's, it's just, i mean already if, it, first off if you haven't played titanfall 2 casually do play it it's a really fun game and then furthermore you know, effect and cause is one of the one of the best levels to showcase it's the level the game is known for yeah, for it's sure the level the game yeah. is known for and so and and to find that kind of trick in it is is really 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 neat. Um, all right, so before we move on to the other games, do you feel like there is um, anything that you're still looking to accomplish with uh, Titanfall Two? You know, whether it be times or anything like that. I mean, it doesn't have to be a goal time. It could be just what's on the future roadmap with you and Titanfall Two. Yeah, it's funny you say that. I've been thinking about that a lot lately. Um, after doing a lot of retrospect, like with my time with Titanfall 2 and wondering like, you know, is it time to just like, you know, throw in the towel? Am I done with it? I don't know, because I've been playing a lot of other games for a while now. I don't think I've touched Titanfall in a serious capacity since uh, July or August at this point. So it's been a while. Um, and I've been finding a lot of joy in running other stuff like Ghost Runner or Halo 3. Um, so I've been wondering a lot about that. And uh and I talked a bit about like the changing of the guard, passing the torch, stuff like that. So I've been I've been doing a lot of a lot of like introspect on that, I guess. Um, and uh, yeah, right right before I stopped playing, um, I uh, that was kind of the thing. I was like, I want to hit these goal times, and then I'm going to learn Halo Three, um, where I got the one I got the the first ever 118 for any percent, uh, which was like a huge accomplishment um, for me personally. And then I got a 54 in no cutscenes, which is also like a big goal. I'd been shooting for for a long time um so i would love to to push the game to to like a 117 and like maybe shoot for a 53 and no cutscenes or anything like that but um uh given that a lot of the uh a lot of like the the really high level competition has uh kind of settled for now it was it was really really uh this this last year uh or 2020 as a whole was really really great for titanfall 2 mm -hmm. from a competitive standpoint um now that it's kind of like died down a little bit, um, people, all of all the people are still running it. It's just not like crazy like it was. Um, I, I feel like pretty content with where everything's at right now, and uh, this kind of circles back to what I said before about where the community is and everything like that. So um, I feel really happy with the other stuff that I'm running, and I'm like content with my times now, and I would like to improve them, but I don't have like that that burning fire to 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 push it mm -hmm. like i did and um i think I, you know what actually my my goal with titanfall 2 still is i want to run my favorite category for it at a gdq and i mm -hmm. think once i've done that i'll probably be like all right i'm good uh, okay. my favorite category for titanfall 2 is is all helmets mm -hmm. um and which is that's basically our all collectibles category um and uh, I feel like all helmets is uh, there are 46 individual helmets that you have to collect throughout the campaign, so it's beat the game, but also collect all those. Um, and I feel like there isn't there isn't a, a category that better encapsulates like you know the the routing and movement possibilities that Titanfall 2 offers because there's a, there's a lot of really really cool stuff that you do in all helmets. And I I just want to I I've been wanting to show that off at a GDQ for a long time. Yeah. Cool. No, I, I I have seen you do some of that. It is it is very cool, especially I mean, just the the extra movement you use to get to some of the places that the, the helmets are hidden uh, is is very very neat. But uh, let's go to another one. This is actually so I you know I think I had first met you uh, at GDQX twenty nineteen um, and well TwitchCon twenty nineteen. Yes. And then I think after that, I probably the first time I started watching your stream more regularly was when you got into uh, Control. Uh, yes. And so. Talk a little bit about you know maybe how you got into control. You picked up the game, speed ran it, ended up taking it to to AGDQ 2020. What was that experience like? Yeah, uh, how I got into control was very similar to to Ghost Runner, where I saw a trailer for it at uh, like E3 the year before, and I was like completely encapsulated with it. And like the is, is encapsulated the right anyway. I, I would maybe um, say enraptured. Is enraptured with it. For? Yeah, 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 yeah. Enraptured with it. Um, 
just like the the tone and the visuals and everything i was like whoa this looks really crazy and like nobody was talking about it which was weird because it was like one of the coolest game trailers i'd ever seen um and so when it uh i, I was mostly stoked for it from a casual perspective I, I i don't really think i had a ton of interest in the speed run initially um yeah um but when it finally came out i played it casually and it was awesome it was uh it was my game of the year for 2019 um i really really loved it a lot um and i wasn't super involved with the speedrun community at first but i was kind of like just observing it to see where the game went i wasn't extremely interested in and in getting it routed or anything like that um and i touched on before at the, at the start of this that you know we were having a really hard time finding like literally anything for the game um, the first few runs of that game were very much just like go the intended route and like try and do the fights fast. Um, there weren't like a ton of skips or anything like that. Um, yeah, but I think, but it was, it was once we got the speedrun.com page and people started flying in and we found consistent ways to get out of bounds and a lot of really cool skips. That was when I was like, oh damn, okay, I'm going to give this a shot. Um, and so from there, uh, it, it was definitely, control is definitely a lot different from any other game that I run. Um, and I think anybody can point that out, you know, given the fact that it's not movement based, it's not first person. Um, it's like this weird third person action game about, you know, like telekinetic manipulation and, and like otherworldly forces and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I think that's why I liked it so much too, was because it was just like so wildly different and it was just a game that I enjoyed so much on my own. Um, but yeah, I think my, my favorite part about that control run is that it's just weird. It's just really weird. And there's a lot of weird stuff that you do in it. You know, like you turn yourself into a gun that just slides around and can look through walls. Like, why does that work? You know, you like stand in like, you stand inside of a wall that, that, uh, suddenly just like zips you up like a hundred feet in the air. And then you use that height to like brute force your way around this really long segment by just dashing through the air for like two minutes straight, you know, just like a lot of weird stuff like that. Um, so I think that's what I liked about it. Um, and uh, yeah, taking it to GDQ was was really, really fun. Um, and uh, I think like I had never seen more like anticipation uh, about one of my runs than before that one, because mm -hmm. I think especially from uh, especially from like game dev Twitter, um, I, I control was a game that was really, really big with game developers. Um, and I had like three different incentives for that game that I submitted that were all like $10,000 and they mm -hmm. were all met before they, before the run mm -hmm. even started. Yeah, yeah. I think because of a lot of that support from, from game dev Twitter. So, um, yeah, it was, a it was a really nice experience. Um, one of my favorite speedrunning moments ever was when I got Slidey McGunny at AGDQ. I was if anybody watching, rem watching that. If vibe, anybody remembers that run, if anybody remembers that run, that's uh, a roller coaster. I, I, I talked <laughs> about it a ton beforehand, you know, like, uh, uh, Kizaron mentioned it, at the AGDQ pre-show about how cool the trick was, you know, and I had been hitting it in practice and like, it's, it's, a, it's frustrating because it's a trick that's dependent, not entirely on player input, but just like certain circumstances in the game that nobody understands to this day. Like mm. even the developers don't know. No, yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah. And so it was really frustrating when was it happening. And then, uh, yeah, I, I, so I didn't end, I didn't end up getting at the part I needed to, but I got it at like the last possible point that I could, um, and it, yeah, anyway, that was, uh, pro probably my favorite speed running moment, but yeah, um, uh, I would say as far as control goes, I, you know, I definitely kind of did everything I wanted to at that game. I would kind of like with Titanfall, I still want to run my favorite category for it at GDQ, which is all bosses. Mm, all bosses. Okay. Um, all bosses is really cool. And there's some, uh, we do some, uh, we, we take, we do some really cool skips in that game that take advantage of the way that the levels are designed and stuff like that to skip a lot of really tedious segments. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. You brought up something that might, this might be a good opportunity for a quick little detour, but you know, a lot of the games that uh, you run, you know, as opposed to some classic speedrun games where either the developers are Japanese, so there's a language barrier, or the games are old, so maybe those developers aren't around anymore. You've been running primarily games which are are new, and uh, yes. a lot of these games are uh, you know Western uh, developers, so you're you're able to to interact with them. Um, how, how is that as a, as I guess a, a streamer, what is it like to, to interact with developers? I mean, is there anything you'd want to comment about with, with regards it's to It's really that? humbling. It's really humbling. Yeah. Um, I think there are, I think there are pros and cons with that. Um, I remember when I went to, 
when I went to, to uh, uh, TwitchCon 2019, which feels like decades ago at this point. It's crazy. I, even though, even though I, it was just last year, I it turned feels into like a skeleton. It, I was like, "This is a year ago." <laughs> yeah, it, feel, it feels like it feels like another world. Uh, but I met the uh, I, I met Vita, uh, who is the community manager for for Remedy. Mm. Uh, she was she was she was there. I saw her wearing like a control jacket. I was like, "Oh shit! I need to talk to this person." Um, and so I went and uh, it was at the partner party, and I went and introduced myself, and she was like. Oh my god, you're the person that speed runs it. And it was like I was like, what the fuck? You know who I am? No, no way. It was fucking weird. Yeah, it was crazy. Um so it's it's really humbling. Um and it's really cool to to be able to uh see like developer reactions to a lot of the crazy stuff that we find. Um and it's nice like maintaining relationships with them. Like I uh one of the uh uh if, if anybody watched the devs react to control speed run on IGN. Um, um, Adam Person, uh, like, or Big Cheese, like, still comes to my stream and hangs out from time to time just to, like, watch me play stuff. Uh, which is, so it's cool to, like, have that sort of relationship with people that make something that you're really passionate about. Um, on the flip side, uh, uh, when developers have such, uh, 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 what would I say? Um, when they have so much access to everything that happens in speedrunning, mm-hmm. it's very frustrating when your stuff gets patched out. Um, yeah, that this is a big this is a yeah. big sour spot with me, even with control specifically. Um, that a lot of our very specific speedrun tech is like impossible on current patch, but there are still like bugs that we encounter on a regular basis that like just aren't fixed. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So uh, it's definitely a I have a lot of mixed feelings about this, um, and this was this also prevalent a little bit with Ghost Runner as well. Though Ghost Runner is different because all the stuff that we discovered was in like a demo setting, which I feel like you go into knowing this isn't a finished project and things are going to change before final release. You know, um, but yeah, it's definitely like a. I've seen a little bit of talk from this on on speedrun Twitter as well, where people get like nervous when they see developers in like speedrun discords. Because like you know they're worried about stuff like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. and uh, and down patching for control, uh, pretty much only got more difficult as time went on. It mm-hmm. was pretty simple at first, uh, but when but as like more and more patches got released, the, it was just like harder and harder to to make the game accessible, basically. Um, so I uh definitely definitely the pros and cons with that for sure. Uh. And I, I have a lot of feelings about, you know, like patching out speedrun tech that 0.5% of people are ever going to encounter in a casual playthrough, you know? Right. So. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the thing, right? If if you're taking advantage of something that's causing a casual player to get locked out of progress, that's understandable. But, you know, so yeah. often I feel like we, we see stories of something that's like, why would a casual player be doing this? And and yet you patched it anyway. Um, I, I feel like so much would, would help with, you know, I mean, I realize it takes effort and labor to make transparency and patch notes and things like that. But, um, you know, if you're going to try and have a positive relationship with the speedrunners in the community, I think you kind of owe it to them to, to at least make some sort of nominal effort. I, I hope, you know, I, I you know, obviously we're passionate about video games. We, we want them to succeed. So, yeah, uh, you know, you, you would want to, you want to have to deal with that before. Um, so, uh let's uh let's maybe let's maybe move on to to young blood um mm-hmm. let's see here what okay so how did you get into young now young blood is a different creature because young blood has co-op stuff going on or yeah my understanding having watched the that that agdq or the yeah the agdq vod my understanding is that you should only <laughs> only play young blood as a as a co-op game I think it's gotten a lot better now. Hmm. Yeah, Youngblood was uh, is kind of a weird blip in my speedrunning history because uh, it was something that, like, you know, it was definitely a commercial failure, that game. Mm-hmm. Um, a critical failure, too. Um, but, man, I had, like, so much fun with that. So it's really weird. It's really weird to look at it. Um, you know, the, the AGDQ run wasn't... I, I think it was... I think it was, uh, I'm very proud of it. I think it was really well performed, even when I go back and watch it. But it's not particularly popular or anything like that, you know? Um, yeah, it, it's it's strange. Uh, I had a lot of fun doing it. It was my first time doing a co-op run. Um, I really like Fun Cannon. Uh, he's a very, very, very good dude. Um, I have a lot of positive memories associated around it. Uh, but it was like, it, it was so brief in its time, you know? Like, I think we picked it up in... 
July or August of 2019, um, and we ran it, and uh, uh, we submitted it for GDQ, took a couple months off, went back and got practiced up for GDQ, did the GDQ run, and we haven't played it since. You know, so it was very, it was a very brief moment in time, but it, it's something I have a lot of positive memories around. Um, and uh, I only wish that, you know, the game was actually considered good by people, you know, <laughs> so that, like, maybe yeah. would have gotten... Maybe we've gotten a bit more attention and it could have stuck around for longer. Uh, you know, I, I, it, uh, uh, TFC had their own stuff going on that prevented us from doing runs anymore. Um, but uh, yeah, it's definitely a, I have a lot of positive memories around that game. It was it was a lot of fun doing that. Yeah, yeah. It, it was my it was my first experience doing mm -hmm. co-op runs too. Um, and uh, 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 routing it with somebody else and figuring out other stuff and kind of like the camaraderie there is. Uh, Something I like, something I look back on pretty fondly. Yeah. yeah. Now this is one of the, when you got into this, I, I actually really enjoyed this as as a viewer, and it was fun too to see, you know, the other runners in, you know, involved. You mentioned Fun Cannon already. Uh, Blood Thunder was involved. Amberlin was involved. You know, all all pretty pretty good runners, and then nothing really seemed to, to coalesce uh, beyond it. It's actually I just I brought up the I just now brought up the leaderboard page, expecting to see at least a few other runners. Um, no. No, and there's only, only there's only one other name that I recognize on we, here, and it's a name that I recognize because it's someone who goes and and does a, like one run when a new game comes out and then moves on. I'm not gonna. That name was a that. problem when the game came out too. Yeah, I don't, I'm not yeah, gonna they, mention they, that on the podcast. Yeah. We can talk about that later if you want. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. have my own stories, and actually, I have my own stories about that in regards to Just Cause Three, but we won't <laughs> we won't cover that right now. Yeah, um, yeah. When, if you watch the HDQ run, we made a joke that the entire. Wolfenstein speedrunning community was mm -hmm. like there, mm -hmm. like the two run, like we it was me and TFC and mm -hmm. then Blood Thunder Amberlin on the couch, yeah, yeah. And like aside from like the judges and like from Dark Hell, which couldn't be there because they live in fucking Europe, yeah. you know, like <laughs> that wasn't that wasn't a joke, you know, like that was that was it. Yeah, it was just us. Was um, yeah, yeah. yeah, and so yeah, I you know, I, uh, I I I I only wish that that the game like wasn't a stinker. Basically, because yeah, I, no. I think uh, I think the run is really cool. Um, I think the co-op interactions are really cool, and yeah, I just wish it got more attention. But yeah, I I, I really loved that game. Yeah. Well, hopefully we'll run, see. That I, run, I should say. Yeah, that run. Yeah. Hopefully, I don't know. It would be it would be cool to see. It's it's one of those things where games that are I feel like the games that are that are critical or commercial failures tend to just you know by their nature attract less attention, even if yep. there's the potential for for a cool run. And so whether or not a cool run comes out of it can often be an accident of, of history, right? Just sort of <laughs> someone has to put in the effort to find that the cool run uh, and then, you know, get other people interested. And that's hard. You know, it can be a, a hard sell for, for something like that. Um, let's start winding down. I, I, so this is a question. You can pass on this question if you want. But okay. uh, my, my, my spouse insisted that I ask, uh, is there an origin story for Dragon that you can share? That I can share. Yeah. Um, and not really any particular one. Okay. Uh, my my ex at the time uh really 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 wanted a Shiva mm -hmm. really bad. Um, and I was like, oh okay, you know, I don't want to like buy a puppy or something like that because I'm not really into that whole thing. Yeah. Um, but we it was just kind of like a right place right time thing where we ended up finding uh, an older couple, um, about five hours south of us that had dragon. He was just about two years old, and they were just getting too old to keep up with him, pretty much. Um, so they wanted to adopt him out. Um, yeah, and everything just lined up for us at the time that we were able to do that. Uh, and um, yeah, so uh, we went down and met him, and he was like, he, he, didn't, really, he didn't really like us at the time. Um, and I remember my conversation at the time was like, oh my god, like he obviously really loves his owners, like... I feel bad taking him out of this situation. And, you know, my ex at the time said, well, if it's not us, it's going to be somebody else. And I was like, you're right. So, um, cause like they were adopting him out either way, like either way he was going to be leaving that situation. So I was like, okay. It, yeah. And yes, dragon is still with me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, dragon, dragon's with me all the time. He's sleeping back so behind. How, my how old right is now. dragon yep. now? He just turned five. Just turned, just five. turned okay. five. Okay. Yeah. That's a drawing of him up there on my wallet. My coworker did. So, well, it's actually a cardboard cutout. But yes, <laughs> cool, cool. no, it's, yeah. It's, I, yeah, I, I'm not someone who was a dollar and a growing up. And I, my, once my, my girlfriend now, now wife moved in with me, she's like, all right, 
you own a house and now we're going to adopt a dog. That's how this is going to work. And so <laughs> we, we got a rescue named Diego, who we think might be part Shiba. He's got a curly tail. His curly tail has got to come from somewhere. He probably got some spitz breed in there somewhere. Then. Yeah, something, yeah, yeah, something. So we're we're trying. My icy again is that my my spouse is like, you know what? Maybe maybe dragon is related. You know, could be distant. <laughs> oh, maybe I don't know. We'll see. Uh, so one of the things I like to do with this interview series to give it a little connective tissue is to pass a question from one guest to the next. Uh, and so last week, uh, Frub gave me this question. Now, when I when I ask for the question, you don't get to know. Who is getting the question? Oh, I was going to say, Fruber and I go way back, so I was wondering who would be targeted at all. No, but okay. this wasn't right. targeted. Okay. He did very much enjoy when I told him who the next guest was, uh, but <laughs> but he had to give me the question before I would tell him. Uh, so Fruber's question for the next Overboost guest was, if there is one speedrun trick from any speedrun you've seen outside of what you've done, what trick would you like to bring into your speedrun? Oh shit! Okay, outside of any speedrun that I've done personally, yeah. uh, so it has to be like one particular game. I mean, it could be a type of trick or something, you know. Like if you're thinking yeah. of, you know, cause oh, I, this is good. Yeah. I'm trying to think of. Oh man, this is hard, dude. I'm trying to think of something like that would really benefit us in Titanfall Two. <laughs> I mean, there I, are, I have a thought are, about this, but I'm biased, so I, I want to let you answer this yeah, before I give my contribution. There are a few sequences in Titanfall 2 that, you know, could just be way faster if we can, you know. Yeah, I'm trying to... This is, uh, I'm, just, I'm trying to think of, like, like any... What, what I'm trying to think of is, like, a trick that is like a consistent out of bounds method mm -hmm. or like a way to clip through doors that wouldn't completely ruin like what makes Titanfall 2 great. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, Cuz Titanfall yeah. 2 is cool because it's an in it's like it's primarily an inbounds movement run. Um and I'm trying to figure out like how do we how do we like cut out all of the slow stuff by like still maintaining most of what makes mm -hmm. it so great, you know? See, I feel um, like my, like I don't know, like I I almost want to put like uh like uh, like diehard Nakatomi Plaza door clipping into <laughs> into Titanfall yeah. 2 or something would be funny. But... Yeah, if we were just able to get through doors, yeah, on a regular basis, um, that would go a really long way. Um, yeah, maybe maybe something like uh, maybe something like quick clipping from Half Life Two, mm -hmm. uh, where if uh, if you haven't seen the No Void clip run. Uh, you like establish yourself into like a really weird game state. I don't know. There's so much weird mechanical stuff that happens with that game. I don't know. Um, but it allows you when you pick up a prop, you like uh, line up like straight on with like a door or something, and then you run, and then you you run with the prop in front of you, and then you run into it, and then you end up your hitbox like passes through the prop to the other side of the door or something like that. Yeah. And there are like I can think of like five or six sequences off the top of my head that that would benefit in Titanfall Two. If we just had like an easy way to get out of bounds or something like that, um, yeah, there. Yeah, I have like I have like quite a few like most wanted Titanfall two skips on the, off the top of my head that we could do with those. Okay. So yeah, yeah. Now that does mean that I do need from you a question, a question. for the next guest. They are going to be a speedrunner. It doesn't have to be a speedrunning related question. I've had broad questions, but of course the person answering it will be a speedrunner. Right. Um, okay. Question for the next guest. Uh, I, I might, I might need, I might need a second. Yeah, go ahead, take a second. I'm trying, to think second. Of, like, I'm trying to think of something that's fun, you know? Yeah, let me see. I, you know, again, too, some, some past questions we've had, uh, if you can mix two consoles into a single console, uh, <laughs> is one, uh, let me see if I can flip through here and find some of these. Uh, what what game has what speedrun has favorite music? Um, mm, mm, mm. Yeah, stuff one. like that. Yeah. Or if you're trying to learn a new speedrun, what's the sort of thing that would make you stop learning it? Is one we have. <laughs> That's good. Uh, 
I think a few weeks ago, M. Sushi just called my bluff and just gave favorite music genre. <laughs> <It was laughs> before that, it had been mostly speedrunner related. M. Sushi's like, no, you can't contain me. How was having sushi on here? Uh, really good, but made me feel old as sin. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sushi, sushi, sushi's a very, very young one. Yeah. One of my favorite people in speedrunning, by the way. M. Sushi. Incredible story. I, to have someone tell a story about international travel in February of 2020 felt like a like a disaster movie <laughs> like here comes it was the really pandemic. weird that, that whole thing yeah they, they, it was really weird that that whole thing happened right beforehand yeah 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 um ah man sorry i have a hard time with stuff like this mm. where i'm trying to figure out something that's like fun but not also not you know like middle of the road and sure, boring sure. or something like that you know <laughs> i mean you're again you're welcome to hit the escape hatch there as i told you that's what that's what sushi did so i don't want to cool cool um is this something i could pass on to you after the interview is concluded like can yeah, i DM you, you, about you this? can do that you can do that you can do okay. that but that means that also means though i'm not gonna t i'm not gonna tell you who it is until you give me the question so oh, that's uh, true know, that's just, true okay I, I just in case you thought i was gonna break the rules here i'm not gonna break that rule <laughs> okay okay um Okay, this this one this one might be in a similar vein to the okay. one that Fruib asked. Uh so I don't know. This this one's a kind of a cop out, but I think it's interesting. Uh I, I'm going to assume that the person coming after me runs multiple speed games. Mm -hmm. I think that's but, true. But uh if you could take one trick from one of your speed games into the other, like which would you do? Okay. How would you do it? Yeah, it's kind of a, it's kind of similar to Proves, but All right. I, I was just thinking about that when you were, when you asked me the question, I was like, hmm, what stuff from like Halo Three or like Ghost Runner would I like to have in, in you know like Titanfall okay. for example? Well, I will yeah. I will DM you. This is the person getting the question. Oh, nice! So oh, cool, cool, cool. That should be oh, fun. Awesome. I think that should be good. good. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, so we're starting to wind down here. We're getting towards the end of this. Uh, games that are coming out in the future, which you are excited to play. Yeah. Uh, well, Ghost Runner just came out, so that was kind of like the one I've been looking forward to for a long time. Um, I am tentatively looking forward to Halo Infinite, very tentatively. Um, 343's track record has like not been super great with the modern Halos, so um, eh, there. Uh, I was looking forward to Cyberpunk, but... It's just like with everything that's come out with the crunch and a lot of the transphobia and stuff like that. I'm just kind of like, I don't even know if I'm going to play it. It's really it hard. I, it's it's so up and down. I was I was ignoring it for a long time because of exactly those things, because of the labor and transphobia. Um, I, I, one thing I'm kind of, I don't know if you feel this at all. Do you ever feel like, you know, being doing streaming and wanting to see success in streaming pushes you to be interested in games that have more hype behind, behind, behind them? Do you feel like that? I mean... It's that was thing, definitely right? something I was feeling, and then yeah. I realized that if I did end up playing this game, it would probably upset a lot of people in my yeah. community, yeah. Um, because my community is very much centered, you know, around being a safe space for for folks like mm -hmm. that. So, um, yeah, I was like, yeah, it's just it's just not worth know, it. I, yeah. I, I've been waiting for it for so long, but at this point, who fucking cares? Right, so, right. Um, I would say, actually, you know what? The one game I am looking forward to more than anything else, uh, uh, uh Death Loop. Oh, oh yeah, my Death god. Loop. Uh, dude, dude. Uh, Never I sleep played, on I played, Arcane. I, I played all the Arcane games this last year. Yeah. Um, and I was just like, like, how did I not play these games for so long? Because I love immersive sims. It's my favorite genre. It's my favorite genre. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was just like, how did I never play Dishonored or Prey? No idea. No idea. Um also, I can't wait for um the uh, uh Dark Messiah run at AGDQ. Oh yeah. That's yeah, gonna yeah. be super sick. But yeah, Deathloop is definitely my most anticipated game, especially from a speedrunning perspective too. I think it could be really interesting. Um, yeah, really looking forward to Deathloop. And then I think the other one, some other ones I would point at now that they're coming to mind, uh, uh, Ghostwire Tokyo, I think should be cool. Um, and then there was that one game that we got a really cool trailer for uh, uh, back during like the, one of the PS5 events before it came out. Uh, it's that one where you're like a cat in like the post apoc world with a bunch of robots stray yeah. i just want to see what that game is like basically yeah <laughs> no those are those are good I, stray is definitely a good one i think to, to keep an eye on i feel like that's one of those games where it's not you know a big triple a release but oftentimes a game that's got enough of a budget to show up in an event like that but you know is not constrained to clipboard men 
Yeah, those games mm-hmm, can really mm-hmm. impress you. It's it, I, I feel like Control was in that realm for me, where I, you know I feel like everyone slept on Control, and of course it turned out to be a lot of people's game of the year 2019. So yes, All absolutely. Right. Where yeah. should people find you? What should they be looking for? <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm Brian Otto, basically everywhere. B r b r y o n a t o. That's YouTube, Twitter, uh, uh, Twitch. Um, it, uh, I, I do a lot of first person uh, and like sci fi and like uh, movement based games. So, Titanfall 2, Halo 3, Ghost Runner are all like the main things that I'm doing right now. Um, probably the main things I'll be doing for the foreseeable future right now, but I'm pretty pretty content with having those as like kind of like my, ma- my main cast. Um, yeah. Uh, 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 you can catch me on, uh, at, 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 at GDQ. I'll be on the couch for a couple games. I'm looking forward to that. Commentary is one of my biggest passions in speedrunning. Um, and, uh, I think also we'll be doing Brio. Oh yeah. G- Gino just mentioned it. We'll be doing Bioshock later this year, which is my annual hundred percent full story, hardest difficulty playthrough of my favorite game, which is Bioshock. So yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. And of course, if you're, if you're watching this after the fact, uh, you know, on YouTube spot or listening on Spotify or wherever, all those links to all of Bri's stuff will be available, uh, you know, in the description, the Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, uh, as well as links to some of the videos that I watched in preparation for this, you know, including uh, SGDQ 2019 Titanfall 2, as well as the AGDQ 2020 runs of Control and Wolfenstein Youngblood. Uh, Ryan Otto, thank you so much for all this time. Yeah, this was really fun. Thank you for having me. But I do need one more thing from you. Okay. In order to properly conclude an episode of Overboost, I'm going to use a gross cheesy catchphrase like, let's boost on out of here. And when <laughs> I say that, I need you to give me your best uh, rocket engine noise. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Folks, thank you so much for listening. Let's boost on out of here. Excellent. Very good. Um, all right. So that pretty much concludes uh, the podcast proper. I know you're planning on on streaming right after this. If you want, we can field some some live Q and A. If you want to bounce right away, that's okay too. I can, I can hang out if anybody has any questions. Yeah. If anyone, can, like, throw them out yeah. now. Throw them out into the chat, and uh, we'll we'll give them. Uh, but otherwise, I think my plan right now, if you're going live right after, I'll hang on and wait for you to set up your go live screen. Oh, just... uh, my partner's here, so I'm oh. probably gonna. Oh, Just you're gonna chill with them for a little bit. Okay. Okay. But yeah. All right. I won't worry about that then. But yeah, if anyone's got a, uh, well, I mean, we got. Give me the questions, Archie. You can't just tease me. <laughs> uh, have you ever, at a certain point in your speedrunning days, uh, felt like it is tiring and wanted to take a break from speedrunning? Oh, do you want to become famous? There you go. Become That's famous? a good question. I want to become famous. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. Yeah, it's a great question. Um. Felt like it's tiring to do speedruns. Wanted to come back and take a break later. Uh, I definitely feel that way with certain games. I think since I've started speedrunning, uh, well, there are definitely. I mean, like, uh, I, I think before I kind of like branched out, I definitely felt that way a lot. Uh, I, I got I got a lot of burnout with Titanfall two and things like that. Uh, um, favorite source game besides Titanfall two, though. That's favorite, good... uh, yeah, that's Half Life two. Half Life two, okay. Half Life two, yep. Uh, protecting your community and very sternly standing up for progressive things is the right thing to do. Have you ever suffered any consequences for it? Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, over the last, uh, and they could be watching this VOD right now. I have no fucking idea. Uh, late last year, beginning of this year, uh, I was very, very constant, or very, very maliciously and, like, constantly harassed by, I don't know if it was, like, one person or a group of people. Uh, they tried doxing me. Uh, they got the address wrong, but they tried. Um... Uh, they, uh, like, tried to, like, contact my partner, a bunch of weird shit like that. So um, I guess you would say that's a consequence of it. People that, like, didn't like how I ran my stream, they got mad that I banned them for, like, being a fucking chud. And so they came after me. It was one thing. Um, but, you know, that's probably the worst of it. Mm-hmm. So um, and then what are, what your, are your thoughts? Yeah. 
What are your thoughts hey, on you... leaderboards for maintaining accuracy versus deplatforming problematic people? Any issues either way? Oh, you just you just deplatform the people. Yeah, if they're like shitheads, like their times don't matter as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, um, if like somebody has the world record for a game and like they turn out to be uh, a really shitty person that's done really shitty things to people, who who cares? <laughs> Yeah, as far yeah. as I'm concerned, no, I, I think that's. I, yeah, I, I'm like, right like, there. Like, they're, like they're, they're just speedrun leaderboards. It's not yeah. the end of the world. And yeah. I, I, one other thing, I, I just want to say about that because I, I feel like you know we could probably both think of some specific cases, but um, you know, definitely, I, I would encourage people to reach out to if you have a problematic person. You know, maybe if you if it seems like a good idea, reach out to other people who might also be dealing with that problematic person. You know, don't don't be alone. Uh, I am. I have for years been sort of the one responsible adult in the just cause room. And I had to deal, I had to deal with someone that I just didn't feel comfortable. You know, I, I should have, I should have done the right thing, but you know, I didn't. And then the fallout community, you know, props to them took the lead in removing this person from speedrun.com. And I was able at that time, you know, I did sort of follow up on what they did. Uh, right, but I right. definitely, you know, I, I, if you if you feel like you're you're a lone moderator of a small game and you're dealing with something like that, you know, I, I there are good people in the speedrunning community that you can reach out to for advice or even for having them take the lead. Uh, you know, that the possibility is there. Just you know, establish those ties if possible. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and and for that and for that matter, by the way, if anybody ever goes through any of the shit that I did that I just described, uh. I have a lot of resources I can share with you as well as for ways to protect yourself and prevent things like that. So uh, DMs are open for that.